this is one marketing channel you could use. You know, this is like the most common when somebody is starting out, they go to, you know, prop stream, list source, any of these marketing platform list providers, and then pull a list and then, you know, go into marketing from there. But I wanted to talk about driving for dollars also, because it can be a really inexpensive way to build your marketing list and you can get some super targeted list. Hey right, guys. So yeah, today's call, you know, I wanted to kind of build on what we talked about last week on how to pull marketing list is what we talked about last week. So I wanted to build a little bit on that. Once you build your list, you know, you can also use driving for dollar, which is uh, something a lot of investors are using. That's another way to build your marketing list. And that's something, uh, you know, we've been implementing and uh, we're going to get more intentional about it. So I wanted to make sure I covered that. And just kind of, you know, add another uh, lead source uh, in your pipeline. And also, if you guys are able to, if you guys have your video camera on, that would be great if you can do that. It just makes the, the call more interactive. Thank you, Masood and Dan, for having your camera on. But yeah, if other guys can also have it, uh, just, you know, makes me uh, feel like I'm talking to, you know, I see other faces and uh, it's kind of nice to do that. Uh, did any of you guys have uh, it? Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, Rohilio, I hope I'm saying your name right, and Lawrence. Did you guys have any questions on kind of what we talked about last week on pulling list? Again, I use, you know, PropStream as an example, but you can use any, you know, you can use PropStream, you can use uh, list source or any other, uh, you know, service provider, that doesn't matter, but the, the, you know, the idea is still the same. So let me just quickly do this, just to kind of quickly, uh summarize i'm going to share my screen yeah so basically for you know the the calls that we're doing uh you know want to put some sort of structure around it so what we're going to do with these calls are uh we're going to break these calls into data marketing sales and uh tracking you know we're going to include we're going to change the name to operations so it's basically data marketing sales and operations uh if you look at any successful real estate investing business that's scaling well that's kind of, you know, the four pillars of marketing or four pillars of your real estate investing business. So you have the data, you know, which we talked about last week, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. And even into next week, you know, once you pull the data, how to stack it into, uh, you know, other things, then we go into the marketing. Once you pull the data, then you want to go into marketing. Once you've done marketing and you start getting lead coming into your pipeline, then it's the sales side of it. You know, how to talk to motivated spellers and how to put them automate uh, some of your follow-ups that's the sales side of it then we'll go into tracking slash operations so let's see you've closed in a deal uh you know what are some of the things you need to do to make sure you're tracking uh, all your expenses and revenue and other operational side of the business um <clears throat> so this is kind of the um you know the the agenda we will be following and i wanted to make sure just kind of going back into uh this is what we talked about last week uh you know, when you're pulling your list, you want to start out, you know, whatever um, marketing platform you're using, whatever platform you're using, prop stream list, or it doesn't matter, they, you know, more or less have the same uh, data. It just filter options are different. So you start with your target city, zip code, county, whatever your target area is, then you want to make sure equity, you're pulling 30% or more. And then years of ownership, you want to make sure it's five years or more at a minimum. You know, you really don't want to go below five years. So I would use the years of ownership as five years. Again, owner type, depending on your market, you could use homeowner absentee, what we talked about last week. Uh, you know, we talked about absentee. One thing I missed last week uh, that I do in my business, and I noticed uh, a lot of other investors do the same thing, is ownership type. I personally haven't had any success going after non-individual owners. So this would be properties that are owned by corporate um, or, you know, trust. So I haven't had any success. So I would add that as a filter option. Also, when you're pulling your list, instead of, you know, ownership type any, I would, I would personally do individual. Um, I haven't had any success going after corporate or trust. Uh, generally, properties that are owned by corporate or trust tend to be more sophisticated investors. So you'll have a little bit harder time um, getting, uh, you know, discounted property uh, from like somebody that owns a property in corporate or trust. So that's that's been my experience, but again, you can test it in your market and uh, see if it works or not. And vacant houses, I 
personally do not filter for that, but that's another filter you could use if you wanted to do that. Um, and then financial distress is another one, foreclosure, you know, behind on taxes, any liens and life event, if you can get the information like divorce, uh, probate or anything else. Uh, so any any questions you guys had on this, uh, otherwise we can go into uh, the driving for dollar side of it. Oops, there's some questions. Cool. Uh, any, any questions on this uh, before we go into kind of, you know, this is one marketing channel you could use. Uh, you know, this is like the most common when somebody is starting out, they go to, you know, prop stream, list source, any of these marketing platform list providers, and then pull a list and then, you know, go into marketing from there. But I wanted to talk about driving for dollars also, because it can be a really uh, inexpensive way to build your marketing list and you can get some super targeted uh, list. Uh, go ahead, Masood, you had a question? Yeah, quick question about uh, like the, uh, you know, city or zip code. Is it better to just focus on one at a time or can you, you can you do like multiple? Yeah, I mean, it. So let's say if you're in a bigger city, right? Let me let me take Chicago as an example, right? Let's say if you are in Chicago. Now, Chicago is a very, you know, big city with multiple zip codes. So in that case, I would not go target Chicago. I would target a specific zip code. You know, there's going to be, yep. you know, like there's going to be some expensive neighborhoods. There's going to be some like D, um, you know, class neighborhood. And then there's going to be like some BC neighborhood. So I would look for those zip codes specifically that need your target area. So it, it really depends. Like for me, when I am buying, because I'm in a smaller market and the cities are like very small, like, you know, um, there's some cities that only have one zip code, for example. So we just go at the city level. Uh, even if the city that we're targeting has multiple zip codes, uh, we're okay buying in all the zip codes. But if you, um, again, I, I think if you, that's a great question. If you're in a bigger city, I would definitely go at the zip code level. You can even do specific neighborhood. You know, you can, again, and props to other tools, you can like draw like a map around it. But, you know, that's like very, very exceptional cases. So it would either be county, if you're okay buying an entire county. If not, then city. Uh, that if you want to, you know, uh, not mm -hmm. target specific cities, but then even within the city, if there's some zip codes that you do not want to target, then I would just go at the zip code level. Okay, I see. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Great question. Any any other questions, guys? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I can provide a copy of this PowerPoint. It's a little bit dated, but I think it should be okay. Yeah, I don't think there's uh, yeah anything has changed. We're going to be making an update. Uh, instead of tracking, we're going to start calling it operations. Uh, it's a bit more like broader term, but I'll, I'll send this uh, copy over. No worries. Cool. All right, guys. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll send it. Uh, I'll put it linked on. Just remind me. I'll uh, I'll get a link to this and put it in our uh, chat uh, next time. With after like just updating it to the current information and share it with you guys. So what I wanted to talk about today was driving for dollars. Again, it's been very effective. Uh, you know, very inexpensive and it can be very effective way to build your list. And we actually wrote a blog on this. So I'm going to put it in the chat. So I put it in the chat. You guys should definitely check it out. It's like, uh, you know, it goes very in depth on, uh, you know, how to find distressed properties uh, using driving for dollars. Again, if, you, if you're using Free Simply and uh, you're not using drive, driving for dollars, I highly, highly recommend you do it. It's absolutely free. Uh, you know, regardless of which plan you're on, it's absolutely free up to 500 properties per month. So it doesn't cost you anything. So I would like, there's no reason not to use it. So I like really, really would recommend you start using it if you're using recently. Again, I'm not trying to push you as using recently, but if you are already using recently and not using driving for dollar, then there's like 500 leads a month that you could be getting uh, absolutely for free. So you don't need to do anything. Once you log into Android or iOS app, you'll see uh, an icon for Drive. Just click on it and start using it. And the cool thing is it's fully integrated with our list stacking and leads. So any time as you're driving, you add a property on Driving for Dollar, it automatically gets pushed into list stacking and stacks against all the other lists uh, that you have. So again, 500 free leads every single month. Uh, you know, I highly recommend you start using it. So uh, again, I want to go into this and just go over kind of how we use list stacking uh, in our market and you know some of the best practices. Uh, again, I've shared the link to this blog so you guys can follow along. Uh, it's a little bit more in depth, so but we're going to go high level. So again, you want to start with picking a target area. 
Uh, Donna, no, it's not a separate app on the phone. It just, uh, if you are an iPhone user, Android user, make sure you have the most updated app. Once you go into the app, I'll show you really quick. Uh, you'll see this icon right at the bottom. It says drive. You just tap on it. It's free. And then you you know tap on start and you're going to start driving for dollars. So you don't need to download a separate app. It's already part of recently um, iOS or Android app. So when you're driving for dollars, you want to pick a target area. So this is going back to kind of what you were asking. You know, this could be like, you're in this case, you're not targeting based on city or zip code. You're just literally targeting an area that you know, you know, would, where you would want to invest. So it could be a particular street. I mean, it's called driving for dollars, but you could use it, you know, if you're going out for a morning or evening walk or just around, you know, doing, uh, running some errands, just start running it. Anytime you see a house, you know, that you would want to add to your list, just do that uh, and start, uh, you know, adding leads. So you want to pick a target area. It could be, uh, let's say if you're going after a city, it could be, and you're okay buying an entire city. So you might want to start with north side or south side of the city and then just kind of say, all right, you know, today or this week, I'm going to cover these five streets. And then it keeps track of all your driving history and everything. So you know, you know, all the areas that you've driven in last like two, three, four, six months, uh, how, how back you want to go. Uh, so you, you start with that, you pick an area that you want to start with, it could be like a neighborhood, it could be a city. And then you say, all right, I'm okay buying you this entire city. I'm going to start with the north side or, you know, whatever side you want to start with. And then just, you know, pick these streets, just go down these streets and then just see, um, you know, any house that looks good. So once you do that, you know, we're going to plan your drive. So you want to make sure, you know, if you're using an app, it's like a lot of this will be <clears throat> automated uh, because you're doing all of this. You don't need a notepad, you know, smartphone. But if you are not using any app, you just, you know, essentially what you're doing is you're starting driving around and you, you know, you have a camera on your smartphone, you take a picture, write down the address. You're just basically building a list on your, on your phone. Uh, yeah, Don, and if you send an email to uh, support at Simply, they'll get you access to that. Uh, so yeah, once you've decided, okay. And then another thing you want to make sure, you know, you're driving between when there's some daylight outside because you're looking for some signs of distress. So depending on, you know, like 10 to four is usually the best time because a lot of people are going to be at the office, you know, not home. So you can just, you know, pull over in front of their house, take a picture. Otherwise, you know, if you're doing it, uh, you know, when people are leaving or, you know, coming to their house or, you know, after evening hours, you know, you, you don't want to get any attention where, uh, you know, you just pull over in front of somebody's house and start taking pictures. So not that it's anything illegal or anything, but, you know, uh, you'll just get questioned uh, by people. And then, so this is the most important part. You are looking for signs of distress or neglect. So you're basically looking for a house that looks like, you know, it needs some uh, attention to it. It needs some, you know, uh, it's it's been ignored and it needs some work done, you know, based on kind of what you see outside. So these are some of the signs that you're looking that are uh, that indicate that the house needs some work done. So, you know, of course, roofs with any holes or taps, taps on them, broken or boarded up windows, busted shutters or torn blinds, you know, signs of hoarding. So if it looks like somebody has, you know, hoarding, like you see in the, in the backyard, they have like full of stuff and you, you can just tell that, you know, somebody's hoarding a lot of stuff, overgrown grass, uh, in your neighborhood, stuffed mailbox or newspaper piles, you know, that, that tells you that probably the house is vacant. Uh, notices on doors and windows, that's another good one. So if you're driving around, depending on the city that you live in, like in our neighborhood uh, where we invest, our cities that we invest uh, in a couple of cities, if the owner is not taking care of the property, usually the city would pay, put like a bright green sticker on uh, on the door. So that's another sign uh, that they've gotten some sort of violation. So you definitely want to add that. Peeling paint, file damage, window units, depending on the, the city that you're in, if you notice all the houses, you know, it's pretty standard for them to have central AC. And then you notice some houses have window units, you know, that typically tells that, uh, you know, maybe somebody cannot afford to have central air in their house. So that's, that's also a good uh, indication um, for a house that, you know, where the owner might be in some distress, uh, park cars in the, yeah, in the yard, uh, you know, typically, you know, that's somebody, a land, uh, tenant occupied property where the tenant is not taking care of the properties, uh, cracks in the foundation and sandbags or signs of flooding. If you see that. So I have some pictures that, um, 
you know, so if you see a house like this that's boarded up, um, definitely add it to your list of properties uh, that you should go after. And then again, if you see something like this, you know, busted windows or uh, or, or blinds, um, shutters, something like that, definitely. Uh, I mean, if you see, you know, there's like cars parked in the garage, definitely a sign of, you know, it might be a landlord, a tired landlord uh, that you might want to go after uh, in your marketing. Again, like a fire damage house, especially a house that's been damaged and it's sitting, uh, you know, it, it hasn't been taken care of by the owner, definitely a sign of distress. Uh, and if you see something like, you know, the mailbox as well, uh, that's very, very, very likely that the house is uh, no longer occupied. It's a vacant house. So that's another good sign um, uh, property to add. Again, if you see overground grass that nobody's taking care of the property, uh, that's another sign. Peeling paint, um, definitely add that to your list. And then if you see, especially in the winter months, you know, if you, uh, if you live in a, in a state where you get a lot of snow and then you notice that, okay, uh, you know, let's say today's Tuesday and then, you know, you guys had, uh, let's say snow, um, you know, in your area like three, four days ago and uh, nobody has still kind of cleaned the, the shovel, the snow in the driveway. That's another sign that the house might be sitting vacant uh, or, you know, uh, the person uh, living in the house is not in a condition to, uh, you know, take care of the, the snow. So those are the signs uh, that you're looking for. Very, very important. Essentially, as you're driving around, you know, you're basically looking for any signs that does the house need any work done. And especially if you're familiar with the neighborhood and if you've seen a house, you know, that has had, uh, let's say, you know, a tarp on the roof and it, it's had a tarp on the roof for, you know, two months, three months, four months now. Definitely, it's somebody who, uh, and, and especially if it's occupied, you know, maybe it's a house that, you know, there are people living in it, but they cannot afford to get the roof fixed, roof replaced, and they've just put a tarp. You definitely want to reach out to them, uh, add them to your list and reach out to them. I mean, how you reach out to them, if you do it through, you know, direct mail, cold calling, texting, or you could honestly, if it's occupied, just like put a, either put a door hanger or you can just door knock and say, hey, you know, would you be interested in selling your house? So that's another way to do that. So these are the signs that you're looking for, um, you know, again, on seasonal clues like unshoveled snow or missing holiday decoration or if you're driving around in the evening and you notice like this one particular house even though it looks fine you know there's no signs of distress but it's never had its lights on might be another sign <laughs> you know that the house might be occupied so those are things that you're looking for next thing you're doing is once let's say you're driving around you find a property that meets the criteria of a distress, right? Next thing you want to do is you want to write down the property address and take pictures. Very, very important. So you know, uh, you know, the property that uh, needed that attention. Again, if you are using an app recently or any other app, you know, as you're driving around, it just, you know, routes you, uh, you just tap on the property and then you can, if it's something that you want to add to your list, then you can just tap on the, the address and it automatically gets added to your list. So you don't have to like literally write down the address and take pictures. So we'll do all of that uh, for you. Sure. And so once you've taken pictures of the house, you know, what next thing you want to do is you want to research the property. So let's say if you're driving around and you've added, oh, there's a question. Yeah, Dan has a question. If you door knock and get an answer, any tips on how to express that you see distress without possibly uh, offending uh, the homeowner? So Dan, great question. I would not go around, uh, you know, personally what I would do is I would not go around and say, hey, I noticed that, you know, you haven't been taking care of the property, you know, I would just make it like, hey, you know, your local investor in the neighborhood, you could say, I just sold a house in the city, in this neighborhood, and I'm looking for more houses to buy. And I'm just going to all the houses, you know, in this area and just finding out if the owner would be interested. So, you know, even though you're not going to all the houses, I would just make it seem, you know, sound like that you, uh, you know, asking all the people in the neighborhood and not specifically targeting their house. So just make it like, you know, hey, I just sold a house in the neighborhood. I'm looking for a, another house to buy for myself uh, or, you know, another house to invest in. And I wanted to see, um, you know, if, uh, if you would be interested, if you've thought about selling your property, if they say no, you know, uh, and if it's a tenant living in the property, then, you know, of course, you want to find out the, uh, you could get the mailing address from the assessor website, send them a mail. But if it's the owner living, you could just say, hey, if you ever think of selling, here's my uh, business card. 
Um, you know, if anything changes, here's my business card and then let me know. Another cool tip to do is if you are going to be doing that, you're going to be door knocking. You know, it's good to like invest a little bit and have a magnetized business card. So instead of like just a simple, you know, paper business card, like if you have a magnetized business card, you know, then people will not throw it as easily as like a paper business card. They would actually put it on their fridge and then, you know, always be like, a silent advertisement for you anytime they go to their fridge they might see you know you want to make it like you know bright yellow or something so it gets their attention so that's another uh you know way to do that if you want to invest in that just have like a magnetized uh business card hey, sell your house and you know whatever and with your phone number or website so anytime they change their mind that they can give you a call uh yeah then uh yeah you could use door hangers also one other thing i would say is if you especially if you're targeting if you're using multiple marketing channels, let's say driving door, uh, while driving for dollars, if you are uh, using door hangers versus if you are using, let's say direct mail, you know, uh, try to use two separate phone numbers, separate phone number on door hanger versus a separate phone number on your direct mail, just so that you could see, let's say if you have, let's say if you have 100 houses, uh, or 200 houses that you add to your list, right? 100 are the ones that you go put door hangers on. The other 100 are the ones that you actually send direct mail to. And then you get 20 people call you and out of those 20 people, you close on two properties. You're like, hey, this is great. You know, out of 200 uh, properties that I added, I got two deals. But you don't know whether it was the direct mail that worked or it was the door hangers that worked. But if you had used two different phone numbers, now you can, you might notice that off the 50 or what we said, 20 calls that you got, you might notice that the, out of those 20 calls, 18 came from direct mail and two came from door hangers, but both the calls that came from door hangers, you actually ended up closing. So it's really, really good data point. And then you want to maybe do another round, you know, doing AB testing, using different phone numbers for direct mail and then different phone numbers for, you know, door hangers. And if you, on your second round, also you notice that you know consistently you notice that you're getting more calls from direct mail but door hangers the quality of calls is much much better uh than you know the calls that you're getting from direct mail then you might just want to you know drop direct mail and do door hangers uh and then if you guys are not familiar i would definitely go to uh ballpoint marketing they have some awesome awesome door hangers that uh you can use let me go there ballpoint marketing so yeah, if you go to this website, if you go to products, yeah. So they have door hangers that are built specifically for real estate investors. Yeah, I don't have any affiliate link, nothing. I'm just, you know, it's a great, great product. Uh, they have other things also like, you know, postcard and letters. Uh, these are all actually handwritten postcards and letters. Uh, but yeah, if, you, if you're using door hangers, like again, they have stuff specifically built for investors um you know the owner of the company is an investor himself so they do a lot of testing themselves uh, we're going to be ordering door hangers from them also uh and then you know again like you see here this is where you want to use a separate phone number from your direct mail i mean if if the number of postcards that you're leaving is like similar to number of door hangers if you're doing two door hangers and sending postcards or letters to like thousand people then i don't think it's worth using a different phone number but if you really want to test it out if you're using like you know roughly like 50 50 or 60 40 balance of how many postcards you're sending out versus how many uh door hangers you're leaving it's it's definitely worth using investing in separate phone numbers then it's going to help you in the long term uh save on the costs and then instead of you know, dropping direct mail, you could just start putting door hangers on all the houses because that seems to be working better, except for like vacant houses, of course. So uh, oops, let me just quickly drop the link in the chat. All right, so I've dropped the link of uh, Palmine Marketing. Yeah, really, really great tool. So uh, cool. So yeah, once you have done that, you know, once you've added your list, the next thing you want to do is you want to research the property. You want to see, let's say if you've added a list of property, uh, you know, some properties that you've added and you notice that, you know, they have really great signs of distress. You know, they meet all these, you know, check boxes that you have. There's, you know, there's like holes in the roof. Uh, there's like crack in the foundation. You know, there's like notices on the doors and everything, but that's only part of it. That's only you adding your list. But next thing that you want to do is you actually want to research the property. Again, a lot of this you can do within the Recently app or any of the driving for dollar app. But 
uh, if you're not using an app, I'm just going to go through the process, you know, if you're not using the app. So let's say if you've added a property, next thing you want to do is you want to research the property owner. So let's say you find out, you know, you have this property meets all the distress pain points that you notice. But when you actually go do research on their property and it's worth $200,000, but you notice that it has zero equity because the owner just took out a loan of $200,000 like six months ago. So then unless you're doing short sale, you know, which can take very long time, if that's your marketing, if that's your marketing strategy, then, you know, you might want to go after it depending on, you know, what the other houses in the area are selling. But if that's not something you're doing, then I would just, you know, you've added that property, then I would just do like add it to like do not market or opt out of your marketing because they don't have enough equity in the house. So there's no point going after a house that's worth $200,000 and has a loan of $200,000. So then, you know, there's like zero equity for you to play with. You want to go after houses that are, you know, at least have like 70 or 30% equity. So the loan balance is no more than 70%. So you want to go back to, you know, uh, you're just adding your list, but again, you want to make sure that there's still, you know, this is just one way to build your list. You still want to make sure that the equity is still 30% or more. Uh, this one, you could be a little bit lenient on There's There's not as high likelihood of this happening where the owner has only owned their property for like, let's say one or two years and it gets to, this stage, for example, you know, unless it's an investor flipping the house, uh, that's another, uh, you know, that's, um, that might be possible, but most of the time, you know, you're not going to find a property gets to, you know, this shape or something like this in, you know, three to four years time frame. So you still would want to make sure that they have equity, you know, they have five years of ownership and the owner type in this case, you're okay. I would ignore the owner type in this case, whether it's a homeowner or absentee, I would still market to them if it has equity and if it has homeownership of five years or more. Uh, I would not worry about the ownership type. Again, you're not gonna find many houses that are owned by corporate or trust that are in really distressed situation because again, uh, properties that are owned by uh, corporate and trust generally tend to be sophisticated investors. So you would not see many properties. So the main thing you wanna make sure in that case is the equity, I would say is the most important thing that you wanna make sure they have equity. Um, this you can ignore, but again, chances of this happening is very, very low. As long as they have equity, I would go after them. Doesn't matter whether it's vacant or not. Doesn't matter if they have any other financial distress. Doesn't matter if they're going through any other life event or not. <clears throat> this is the most important thing. I would say you want to make sure that if you're adding something from driving for dollars, that they at least have 30% equity in their house. Because, you know, as you can tell, I mean, if, if you're buying a house like this, it's going to need some work done. So there needs to be some profit in the deal for you to make money. It's not somebody that's calling you, hey, this is a $100,000 house, I'll sell you for $70,000 and it doesn't need any work done. It's not that kind of a house, you know, it, it is gonna need some work done. So you wanna make sure at least minimum, minimum, there's 30% equity on the house. And then the more distress points that you have, the rehab uh, budget is gonna go up. So you wanna, you know, make sure you have a little bit more buffer, uh, especially, you know, in this market that we're in, if you go up the higher price point that you go in, uh, you know, the more buffer that you want to have, because, you know, if the interest rate goes up again, it makes a pretty big difference as you go higher up in the price point uh, with the affordability of the people. So uh, make sure as you're researching, um, you know, remove any properties that have low equity. So again, I would go through this blog that I put in the chat. It goes uh, in very, very in depth on, you know, the things that I'm talking about, but I would remove anything that has low equity, you know, bank owned property, if it's a bank owned, it's going through some sort of foreclosure process. So, you know, no point going after that property. And then properties only sold in like last year or so. So if somebody bought the property last year or so, uh, you know, that means probably an investor who bought it and they're in the middle of the rehab. So no, no point going after that. Um, equity is the main, main thing I would go after and see if it's low equity, I would take it off the list. Everything else, you know, uh, depending on if you only have like 50 properties, um, even if it's bank owned, doesn't matter, you know, I would still send them. But if you have like 500 properties, then I would like start filtering it down uh, and then just keep adding more uh, filter criteria on that. Um, a homeowner who bought this property in the last year or two will likely be less motivated to sell than someone who has owned the property for five, seven years or longer. Again, you know, what I mentioned in the last call, and then we just talked about 
somebody who just bought the property last year or two, they might have bought it knowing that this is what the condition of the property is. And they're, you know, they're gonna get to rehabbing the property. You know, maybe they're waiting, saving up some money, but somebody who's owned the property for five to seven years and you know they have uh, the condition of the property, you can tell this very distressed, definitely go after them. So um, and this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, you know, uh, if you're using recently app, you'll notice uh, this section right here drive and this is where your properties would uh, would start getting added so once you've done that once you've added your properties you've cleaned up your list based on the equity or any other filter criteria that you have the next thing you want to do is you want to start contacting the property owner so again in the app you could just easily filter uh, you could easily add a property you know and tap a button to skip trace it'll give you three phone numbers uh, and up to three phone numbers and four emails. So you can like call them, text them, email them. Uh, but if that's not what you feel comfortable with, like calling and texting, you know, just sending out cold text or cold call, um, you know, then direct mail, um, door knock or door hangers is a great, great way. Uh, I would not put any door hangers on a vacant property because nobody is going to get to it. Um, but but, you know, I mean, again, if it's a small list, you could put it on it. Maybe the owner, you know, comes around once a month or so and might see your door hanger. Uh, and if it's occupied, you know, if you're okay, if you're comfortable with door knocking or definitely door knock and see uh, if that's something, you know, they might be interested in selling. So once you've added your list, you've filtered down. Uh, once you've added properties, you've filtered down on the properties that you want to go after. The next thing is you want to figure out what's the marketing channel. Again, this is something we'll go in a little bit more detail in next call or two. Uh, but you want to make sure you figure out um, and then, you know, we've put together some pros and cons of different marketing channels that you're using, uh, you know, SMS and cold call, like quick, easy, you know, inexpensive, but the cons are, you know, turns out most people to receive a cold text or call. And then again, you know, you have to make sure you're being TCPA compliant. You can read a little bit more on this blog by clicking right here. Uh, direct mail, it's more personalized, tangible, you know, targeted marketing specifically for that property. And you can also, you know, with the app, you can also actually include a picture of the house in the on the postcard. So, you know, it's another reminder for the homeowner of the condition of the house. So maybe it might be somebody who, especially if you know the property owner is living out of state, uh, you know, or far from the property, you know, in a different part of the state, but like two, three hours drive from the property. So they might, they might not remember what the property looks like, but if you send them a postcard with a picture of the property on it, you know, it might just bring back, you know, it might just increase their motivation level. So uh the cons is re relatively more expensive and response rate it can be lower compared to sms uh especially you know sms generally people would say hey take me off the list don't ever call me or text me um but you know that's another way to um i mean direct mail the only downside that i really think is like it's can be a little bit more expensive uh door knocking and door hangers it's instant you know if the house is occupied you just go knock on the door and just talk to the person more personal uh, and then you have the opportunity from, you know, for building a great rapport with them versus, uh, I mean, you have to imagine you're not the only one who's going to be targeting that property. Lots and lots of other investors and agents are doing the exact same thing that you're doing. Uh, so, but if you can go a step further and actually, you know, build that relationship with that homeowner and build that rapport and then have them trust you over any other investor that's going to go a long long way in helping you get that uh property uh cons is you know if it's not uh, applicable for vacant property and it's more time consuming you know it doesn't cost anything i mean door hangers are going to cost something but door knocking is not going to cost you anything other than your time so you know you have to balance your you know uh, availability of time and money uh to see kind of uh, you know how you want to manage which marketing channel then if there's only if you're just starting out I would encourage you to do some door knocking just, you know, uh, to get that fear out of the way on how to talk to motivated sellers. It's a great way to just kind of build that rapport and, you know, just write down the list of questions that people are asking. You know, if somebody's interested, okay, what are they asking? How are you answering those questions? It's going to build confidence and, and it's also going to, you know, you know, bring, uh, shed some light on some of the things that people are concerned about you know uh in in this uh you know with the market the way it is so if you're starting out it doesn't hurt to just go and do some door knocking uh how do i find the property owners uh phone number to send sms or call them again if you're using an app like recently you just you know push a button 
a skip trace or give you up to three phone numbers and four emails and otherwise you know if you uh, you can use some other skip tracing services uh, we have some built in within be simply or you can go to like white pages or you know been verified and then just kind of uh see if you know you can look up the owner's uh, phone number and property address uh, a lot of people also talk about any questions on this before i go any further uh donan has a question if you find a house that it's mid construction the construction has stopped there is no address on prop stream how do you find who owns this? Don, a great question. Yeah, if you find a house that's mid-construction and you know if you're familiar with the neighborhood and you know that, and especially if it has a stop work order, that's another one that you want to look for. Again, like that's another you know, part of city violation. What you want to do, it might not be in prop stream. You want to go to your local county assessor or treasurer's website, type in the property address. They have to have the owner's name and mailing address so you should be able to find it in your local county assessor or treasurer website so great question any other questions on this guys before we go any further absolutely no problem Donna. all right so a lot of people use virtual driving for dollars so basically what is virtual driving for dollars so let me quickly do this all right this is my office address uh 8410 kennedy avenue this is um the office building that we own so what a lot of people do, instead of actually driving for dollars, what they do is they just go to like Google and they click, you know, maybe they'll click on this property or pull up, you know, the Google Street View. Then maybe they'll click on another one and then pull up another uh, street view that you have. But what you want to look for is, again, Google is not updating their maps every single day or, you know, they're not updating it regularly. I think there's a way. So if you look at this, you see on my map, this is from June 2019, right? So if you go based on virtual driving for dollars, you know, you at least want to make sure that this picture that Google took is from last, no more than like six months older, right? This is what the property looked like in June of 2019, but this is not what the property looks like now, you know? It's been like four years, three and a half, four years since uh, you know, Google took this picture. So very, very important if you are doing virtual driving for dollars, you know, you want to look at this image capture and not this. I mean, you know, you see this like 2023 Google. It doesn't mean that this is when Google took the picture. This is when Google took the picture, image captured June 2019. So you don't want to do, you know, it, it's it's kind of like you are doing driving for dollars now, but you're sending them direct mail three and a half or four years later. That's kind of what's going on with virtual driving. Some of these are gonna be more updated, more recent, but most of these are gonna be very, very dated. I think Google updates it like every so many years. And I think you can go ahead and look at some of the, you know, yeah. So if you can see like they have historical data also. So you can uh, scroll, you can see this is what the property looked like in August, you know, and then this is what it looked like in August, 2013. This is what it looked like in October 2016, 17, you know, 18, uh, 19. So they haven't done this since uh, 2019. So, you know, I mean, just make sure you if you're doing virtual driving for dollars, you're doing it based on the most, you know, no more than six months old data. Okay. So very, very important to keep that in mind. But they, basically that's what virtual driving for dollars is. You're literally like, you know, clicking right here let me see how i get to yeah you're clicking right here and then you're clicking on this again this is from august 2013 so imagine like this is like my office is on a busier street so google is like you know updating it more frequently but this is from like 10 years ago almost so you don't want to rely on this data uh from 10 years ago but you know if you're doing it you can basically just click right here come right here and then just go down uh, the street and you see anything. But again, if it's more than six months older, just totally ignore it. There's no point, you know, going after the data from August 2013. So, uh, but that's what virtual driving for dollar is. Like the benefit is, you know, of course, it you can just do it from your office, from your computer, um, you know, but again, of course, the downside is you're not getting recent pictures of the, the house. The whole point of driving for dollar is to look for signs of distress right now on the property like i mean even if if you must do driving for all dollars virtually i would not go more than six months but again i mean you know you're you're not gonna you know 
the condition of the house six months ago is not going to be the same that it is. It might be more distress. It might not have any signs of distress, but that's something, you know, you are taking a risk on. Uh, so something to keep in mind. Again, uh, there's going to be some houses that were not distressed six months ago, but are distressed now. You're totally going to miss that if you go based on uh, just what you're driving for dollars. So uh, that's what it is. That's what a lot of people do in their business. Um, you know, driving for dollars, I, it, it still works. I mean, it's, it's a great, great way. And again, if you're using recently, it's absolutely free up to 500 properties. So there's no reason not to use it. I mean, it's like free leads that you're getting 500 leads um, that I would definitely, definitely make sure you are uh, adding in your uh, business and then just start marketing to them. So it's free leads, you know, whether you door knock, um, you know, you get free leads. If you don't want to door, uh, if you don't want to put door hangers, at least door knock, it doesn't cost you anything. And it just, you know, builds uh, more experience and, you know, it, it gets you more comfortable talking to motivated uh, sellers. So cool. That's what, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about in this call. Uh, all right, Hesu, thanks a lot. We have to jump on a meeting. Cool. Awesome, Hesu. Thank you for being on the call. See you next time. Don has a question. Can you send a direct mail out from recently when you're in front of your property? Yes, you can. Uh, I will, I should have a record. I have a recorded demo and I'll, I'll send it. Uh, I'll, I'll have it for next recording. I'll share it with you. So if you guys want to do that, how do you send it? But it's super simple. If you go to, let me see if I can share my phone screen. Let me see if it will let me do that. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not letting me share. So sorry, apologies about that, but uh, I'll make a video and I'll share it with you guys on how to do that. Uh, yeah, but you can definitely do that. You can easily, uh, as you're driving around, you know, you tap on a property address in the app. Uh, and then it'll give you a bunch of options on, um, you know, if you want to skip trace them, if you want to call them, um, and then you can just like, you know, uh, if you want to send them a direct mail, just, you know, follow a couple of steps, you know, what information you put on the postcard and include, it will include a picture of the house. So this is like, it looks something like this. And, uh, and then you just tap on it and then you can just send direct mail uh, from there. So cool. any, any other questions guys that I can answer for you guys? Uh, it cost uh, don't know, it cost ninety nine cents per postcard uh, to send it from there, but if you have a pretty big list, uh, I would just you know as you're adding properties, what it is going to do is yeah, let me go back to sharing my screen. So if you're adding properties in recently, what's going to happen is all the properties that you're adding in recently driving for Florida, they are also getting added in your. Uh, in your list stacking. So let's say you add a bunch of different properties. So what you can do is you can come back here, you can come back here and you can click on list to include. I think it's called this. So by default, we added to recently D for dollar list. So you just click on that, select that. I don't have any, oh, so I do have actually some added. So all you need to do is then, let's say if you're sending postcard to all of these for 14 properties, you can do select all click on action, then click on order direct mail, or if you have their phone number um, and you want to call them, we should have that, you know, part of the next update uh, next month where you can just call them from within the app, but you can do click on order direct mail and then it'll just go ahead. I mean, some of the properties that I have don't have mailing address, so it's like dummy data, but then you can just click on order direct mail and then do direct mail. If you're doing it from the website, um, you know, depending on how big you're listed, it's going to be anywhere from, 40, 45 cents to like 60, 65 cents, but it will not have picture of the property. So if you don't want to add picture of the property, you're okay, you know, you want to send like something uh, generic, uh, then you can just, you know, send it from the, uh, from list stacking. But if you want to include the picture of the property, then it's going to be dollar uh, per property. And you can always like try calling them, texting them first. If you do not get hold of them, then you can do direct mail also uh, through uh, through the app. So you don't have to do it while you add a property. You can always do it later on after you've added the property. And, you know, uh, like let's say you added 10 properties and then you're doing it at the end of the day. Like, hey, I'm going to send direct mail to these 10 properties. And you can just, you know, at the end of the day, uh, send direct mail to those 10 properties. Great question. A uh, couple of more questions. Uh, Jermaine has a question. Will this driving a dollar presentation go into the training wall this week? Yes, it will. Uh, I'll make sure that it gets uh, added uh, this week and it'll also get updated to our, uh, our YouTube. On YouTube, uh, you know, now we just have to make sure like any of the property address name, uh, you know, we're blurring that out, but 
uh, it should get added this week. I'll make sure I send a message to my team to get this added. Cool. Awesome, guys. So next week, what we will talk about, and now that you know, we talked about like the data side of it, so let me go back. Let me hide this from my screen. Okay. So what we'll talk about next week is, so if I go back right here, so we talked about last week and this week about data side of the business. You know how to pull a list using prop stream is what we talked about. So if you didn't, if you went on the call last week, I would definitely go watch it. And then this week we talked about how to, you know, build more data using uh, driving for dollars. So what we're going to talk about next week is, you know, partly data and then marketing side of it. So next week we'll talk about, okay, the data that you have pulled from uh, prop stream, list source and driving for dollars or any other marketing channel that you have. Now, how to clean up that data and then how to start doing marketing to that list. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next week call. Uh, but I want to make sure we started you know, with the right foundation of pulling the data. Now, what are some of the things to you know, watch out for? And you know, next week we'll talk about like, how to clean up the data and how to go after more targeted lists uh, than like a generic list of uh, properties that you have. So, so that's what we have. Uh, any questions? Can you recommend a door hanger render? Yes, absolutely. I put in the chat. I'll put this again. To do this uh, ballpoint marketing. They have door hangers built specifically for real estate investors. And the cool thing is, like if you look at their door hangers, uh, they're actually with ballpoint uh, pen. So they're handwritten. I mean, they use a machine, but you know, these are actually hundred and uh, like machine, but you, you can tell the difference and really, really cool. So that's what we are going to be using. I'll reach out to the owner of the company and see if they have a coupon code and see if they can provide a coupon code that I'll share with you guys. Oh, got any, yeah, uh, no worries. Yeah, so uh, this is the uh, the vendor that, you know, I, I, I personally would use and the one that I recommend. Again, I'll reach out to the owners of the business and see if they have a coupon code that they can share uh, with you guys. So again, I don't have any affiliate relationships, so, uh, but great, great company owned by real estate investors. Uh, Blaine, we already have uh, this. Are you talking about integrated door hangers? We already have ballpoint marketing integrated within Resimply, but not for door hangers. Uh, but if you have any suggestions on uh, how, you know, kind of what you're talking about, I could definitely talk to the owner of the company and see, you know, how we can integrate that. We already have ballpoint marketing letters integrated in our system. Um, I'm actually, I'll actually talk to the owner and see if there's a way to integrate the, the door hangers also. Cool. All right. Uh, do they have an affiliate link? Don, can you explain what you mean if they have an affiliate link? I, I do not have an affiliate link. So if you just go like, you know, you can just order it from uh, right here. Uh, you can just order it from right here. I'll ask them if they can, you know, create a coupon code that I can share, but I, I don't have an affiliate link. So I don't get paid anything uh, if whether you use the service or not, but I'm just sharing with you. This is the one that I am going to be using. So, and these are like really nice looking. They're built specifically for real estate investors, but I'll ask them for a coupon code and I'll put it in the Facebook group. Uh, if I have that, and uh, you know, then you guys can use that. Uh, I see, Blaine. What do you mean? Uh, so you're talking about like sending one off postcard or uh, letter, right? Because door hangers, of course, like you would actually have to go physically put it. Uh, but I'll find out uh, if they, you know, if they can do one off, um, you know, postcard or letter uh, from uh, from time dollars. Uh, any other questions got related to what we talked about or anything else? Again, I'm going to put a link to this blog that we have on our website. So it talks more in depth on kind of, you know, everything that we talked about. Uh, basically, it's just these are all the steps in depth. So, uh, you know, highly recommend you know, using this as a guide. But we'll also have this recording live in next uh, before the end of the week. I'll make sure my team um, puts it on our YouTube channel and also, and we'll uh, email a link to this. Cool. Um, and any other questions guys related to this or anything else that I can answer for you guys? Cool. Uh, if I can ask you for, again, a huge favor, guys, it would be, again, it really, really helps my team. If you guys, uh, if you guys, you know, got any value, uh, from these, if you guys are getting any value from these calls, 
Uh, I shared a link in the chat. If you can go to trustpilot.com, I shared a link in the chat. If you guys can please leave us a five-star review if you get any value from these calls. Uh, it really, really helps my team because you know I, I get to talk to you guys more face-to-face -face and like you know get the feedback, but it really helps our entire team see the feedback, you know, that everything that they're doing is adding value to you guys and they get super excited. It keeps them super motivated uh, to make sure they keep doing that. So if you, you know, take you less than 30 seconds, uh, if you go to the link that I put in the chat and leave us a five-star review, again, my team would really, really appreciate it. So, uh, cool. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you guys on the next call. Again, we'll just keep building on what we've talked about. So next call will be about how to stack your list and then start doing uh, marketing from there on. But if you guys have any other questions on this or uh, you know anything else, uh, please put it in the Facebook group and I'll make sure I get uh, back to you as soon as possible. And then Donald, if you can send an email to uh, support at we simply about uh, your driving for dollars. Um, and again, one, uh, the driving for dollar by default, the access is to the main user. So if you're not the main user on the account, then the main user will have to go in and then you know give make you the uh, the actual driver uh, for the app. But if you send an email to support it recently, they'll get this uh, taken care of for you. So again, thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week. Um, again, you know if you guys can leave us a review, uh, it would mean a lot to everyone on my team and uh, myself. Cool. Thank you, guys. I'll see you guys all on next week call. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Thank you.